Before I forget, click in the top right corner to vote for your favorite kind of theory. It won't leave the video, so I'd recommend voting. This video was so complicated that the robot voice wouldn't work for it, so I finally went out and bought a proper mic to do this myself. As a matter of fact, it's so complicated that I'd recommend skipping to the end via the description. Anyways, this is my first book theory. Hansel and Gretel is the classic tale of two kids who find a gingerbread house in the woods. It's a trap, a witch appears and tries to eat them, antics ensue, they escape, etc. Multiple incarnations of this tale have been in many movies, TV shows, and more, but since it all started with this tale, or book, it's a book theory. The most interesting aspect in this story is the gingerbread house. People decorate them for Christmas, but if a gingerbread house was as large as the one in Hansel and Gretel, where would it sit on its nutritional info? How much is a real-life gingerbread house? Well, we'll have to start with some assumptions. The house is square with 6 inch thick walls, floors, and a ceiling, and approximately is 19.05 feet long and is 19.05 feet wide and has 9 foot high ceilings. This house needs to match the one in the story, so it'll be about one room this size. This is 363 square feet. Multiplying it by the height, we can find out how much gingerbread we need to build this house. Finding the volume of the inside of the house, and then finding the volume of the house, and its 6 inch walls, and subtracting, we see that we'd need 758 cubic feet of gingerbread to make up the walls, floor, and ceiling. If we're to assume that there is also a roof, then that gingerbread should be added as well. If the house is square, meaning a 45 degree roof, and the roof looks like a triangular prism, then we just need to use some trigonometry and the estimated measurements of the rest of the house to find out that around 438.34 cubic feet of gingerbread is required for the roof. Adding the required gingerbread for the main house and roof, we see that in total, Roughly 1,196.34 cubic feet of gingerbread is required to build this house. But we aren't done. We've still got to add the icing to hold the house together, and of course, the toppings. After I looked at all the nutritional info of small amounts of gingerbread and compared it to this, I can find its sugariness. As of where it sits with just the gingerbread, here's how it looks. Pause if you need to, and look at this so far. This is not something you can buy as a setup kit in Walmart. You'd need advanced carpenters and bakers to assemble this behemoth. Time for the icing. We'll assume that the icing is one inch thick and that it covers the entire surface area of the house. Calculating the surface area of our massive prism, I found that the total surface is about 1,850.9 square feet. Multiplying it by the thickness of the icing discovers that we need 154 cubic feet of icing. Finding the info on icing and comparing now gives us this on our little chart. Or I suppose it's more than just a little. Irregardless, it's time for the toppings. To keep it easy, the surface area toppings will be in normal proportions. Small jelly beans, small gummies, and smarties. Chocolate flooring and giant candy canes will be in the yard, and they'll be largely sized. And also, let's say that all of the furniture is made of a gummy-like substance as well. If we use the surface area of the house, find the estimated depth of the candies, around 0.25 inches, and divide it by 3, we see that the total volume of 12.85 cubic feet of each of the three candies will be required to fully cover the icing. For simplicity, I'll assume that the gummies and smarties are about the size of jelly beans. Jelly beans have an approximate volume of 3.38 cubic centimeters, or 0.00011193636 cubic feet. Using math, that means you'll require 107,654.26 jelly beans, as well as 107,654.26 gummies, and you got it, about 107,654.26 Smarties. After two hours of ridiculously tedious calculating, I came to the conclusion that this is where we currently sit. Wow. This is the icing, gingerbread, and items covering the outside icing. Just look at this diabetic abode. Eating all of that would give you way too much energy, as stated here in the absurd amount of calories. So now that we've got the candy covering the icing, we'll need to do the rest of the candy. 
Assuming chocolate flooring, this will be quick. We already know the floor space or walking square footage of the house. Remember, it was 363 square feet. If the chocolate flooring is six inches thick, then its volume is 181.5 cubic feet. Finding the nutritional info for milk chocolate, we can find this chocolate's stats with volume comparisons. And just look at this number now. After getting the nutritional info for chocolate and the volume of the chocolate, the nutritional info describes, I compared my volume and look at this. Time for the giant candy canes to make it easy on myself. These candy canes are just going to be 1,000 times the size of normal ones. There will be approximately 10 of them scattered through the yard. Yet again, comparing volumes, this is what our info spikes to. And finally, the furniture. These gummy couches and chairs will be a million times larger than a small gummy bear and will have 10 pieces of this furniture. In that case, here is our final stats of the house. It will have 921,603,130.4 calories. It will contain 734,470,287.8 milligrams of sodium. It will include 38,212,134.47 grams of fat. Oh yeah, that's chubby. This humble abode will hold 76,392,651.35 milligrams of cholesterol. This home will be constructed with a beneficial 10,634,997.98 grams of protein. It'll have the insane amount of 134,146,379.5 grams of carbs and around 121,327,015.8 of which will be sugar alone. Not including baking and construction fees, the raw material used to build this house would be $5,862,681.37 in US dollars. According to my other theory, Mr. Crafts could afford to buy this, if only he were land-based. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.